So what my word caring meant to me in 2021. For a long time at First Church, we had discussed how we could become more involved with addressing justice issues in the greater Hartford community, more than just providing financial support. When the Center for Leadership and Justice, formerly known as the Christian Activities Council, created the Greater Hartford Interfaith Action Alliance, or GIA, in 2020 with 40 different Greater Hartford Houses of Worship, First Church eagerly joined with several First Church core team members. With the support of First Church and its other members, GIA had a successful year in 2021. GIA succeeded in eliminating welfare liens, passing clean slate legislation, and having Governor Lamont declare racism a public health crisis. Given that these victories will impact thousands of lives here in Connecticut now and in the future, First Church should be proud of what it has contributed to these accomplishments this past year. I believe that GIA is one of the most important commitments First Church has made since I have become a member. We are putting time and effort into making systemic changes in many institutions and policies that historically have negatively impacted our fellow brothers and sisters of color and those with very little economic standing. How does all this relate to my star word, caring? Well, I believe our faith calls us to be action-oriented. Our faith requires us to be compassionate and to walk in another's shoes. It calls us to take action, to make meaningful change, especially when we see injustice. Archbishop Tutu once said, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. Father Richard Rohr says this about justice and charity. Justice and charity are complementary but clearly inseparable. The giving and caring spirit of charity both motivates and completes our sense of justice. But the virtue of charity cannot legitimately substitute for justice. Persons capable of doing justice are not justified in preferring to do charity. During 2020 and 2021, I realized I needed to do more than what I had been doing. I needed to confront the long history of racism in our country more directly. I needed to better understand the systems and thinking that contribute to the continuing inequities in our country. And I needed to determine how I might be more effective in making change. This led me to step out of my comfort zone and to become more involved in different ventures, both locally and regionally, to address social and racial issues. One such example is when I joined a GIA-sponsored program this past year with several other First Church members, Planting Justice Racial Activation Teams. It was a six-month program with other GIA houses of worship where each group was taught about racial justice with the ultimate goal of developing action plans around our respective church home and communities. We had readings, presentations, and discussions about race that both educated and challenged us. It required us to think about how our faith informs our commitment to justice. The most difficult question I needed to answer revolved around my reason for doing this work. I had always thought that we were to help others, but I learned that that reasoning is not enough. This hit home for me when I read this quotation from Lilla Watson, an Australian activist. If you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. I learned that to fully commit to this work of social and racial justice, I needed to see how I would personally benefit. I needed a personal stake in the ground because if there were no benefit to me, it would be easier to withdraw from these struggles once I faced difficulties. I came to understand that my happiness is tied up with the happiness of my fellow brothers and sisters of color 
and those at the lower rung of the economic ladder. Matthew 5, verse 6 states that blessed are those who hunger for thirst and righteousness, for they shall be filled. Father Richard Rohr explains that righteousness implies that we have a responsibility to make sure every human being has what he or she needs and that we live in a right relationship with God. I do not know what my Star Wars will be in 2022, but I am pretty sure that my previous Star Wars of generosity and caring will continue to be important words for me. I know I am a work in progress, as we all are, so I will continue to pray for guidance and support as I continue this journey. Thank you.